Once upon a time, there was a dragon. And that dragon was always fascinated by the castle that he could see at the foot of the hill. Did you know that dragons are inherently curious, almost like a cat is today? So one night the dragon couldn't resist going down to the base of the hill and trying to look in one of the windows. And the closer and closer and closer she got, the more curious she got. And you can even imagine that big tail swaying as she got closer and closer to see what's inside the castle. And then suddenly she got a little bit too close and the glass window shattered. But finally that big eye could peek and see exactly what was inside that castle. That's the inspiration for this piece, the dragon in the window. That sparkly dragon eye peeking through the broken stained glass at the ancient window frame on the other side. What's going on inside? Is she just curious? Is she friendly? Is she mean? Well, I'll let you finish the rest of the story. But the piece should inspire you to think about your story when you're making artwork. In this case, we went the extra mile and the piece even lights up. Let's see what happens when the light comes through the window. Now the stained glass lights up and you can really see the sparkle in her eye. I'm Joe Rotella, this is Create and Craft, and I'm gonna show you how you can make your own dragon in the window. I think the dragon in the window project looks way more complicated than it actually is, at least from an assembly point of view. I wanted to show you what it looks like in a dry fit. So a dry fit is when we put all the pieces together, but you actually haven't glued anything, painted anything. I like to do this with any of the more complicated projects, just to make sure that I've got everything right. Now, what's really cool about this, eventually we'll hide that battery pack, but hopefully you can see those lights. So this actually lights up. And the idea here is that we've got a dragon who was a little curious, poked his head to look inside the castle, got a little too close and broke the glass. This extra compartment down here holds this battery pack. So we needed a place to put that. Now, what you wanna do on the front of that, that's up to you. I'm still deciding how to embellish that. It could even be a clock face. You could put a little clock down there. That would be incredibly cool. You could write a name, your family name. Let's look at how this all came together though. So there's my dry fit. I'm gonna just turn it over so that we can assemble it from back to front. And you can see exactly how this put was put together. So I'm gonna remove the rubber bands I have holding it together for the dry fit. Now to be honest, I had these on here because last night I had to turn it on at night and walk around the house and see how it looked lit up. So that's where all that came from. So let's talk about how this all started. The first layer you have is the very back of the whole assembly. This hole is so that you can reach in and turn the switch on and off for the lights. So this starts as a solid piece cut on the scroll saw, cut out to be our window shape. Now don't worry about any of these patterns. They're all available for download in this blog post. And there's a lot of layers here. There's seven layers of wood, some of it's eighth of an inch, some of it's quarter of an inch, and then there's three layers of other stuff. All of it is in the blog post. So there's the base. Now up here we're gonna put the lights, right? And I want the lights to shine through into that stained glass effect. I wanted something really reflective, so Rinia foil paper, right? Put a piece of that here, and now it'll help bounce light off the back towards the front. So there's the bottom layer. That would be adhered in place, right? I love using score tape, a dry adhesive for this kind of thing. The next layer is the dragon eye. Now, if you haven't played with this, this is a diamond art kit from Leisure Arts. They come boxed, ready to go with everything you need. This is the Dahlia, there's a bumblebee, there's a unicorn. I mean, beautiful, beautiful kits. But this dragon eye caught my attention right away. Now, this takes a little bit of time. If I did the math right, there's over 5,000 diamond gems on this. And each one has 13 facets. That's what gives it that sparkle. So put together the, the dragon eye using the instructions on the box. Everything you need is in the box. Then you're gonna cut out the dragon eye and you're gonna glue that 
to the base. And that's a great candidate for Mod Podge Ultra. Be sure you cover your work area so that you don't have to worry about overspray. Follow the directions on the bottle and then just adhere that right to the base. So you can see how we're building up here. The next layer is a quarter inch thick and now you'll notice there's a much bigger space down here at the bottom. That's so there's plenty of room for the battery pack for that lights. And this fits right around that dragon eye. So we're gonna hit adhere that into place. Then you've got another layer here, also a quarter inch thick. The opening around the eye is slightly smaller than the other layers. What that gives you is a little lip that's underneath here so that you can put the batteries down here and then inside that little lip, we're gonna be able to run the wire, right? Right up that little channel under that frame so we're not gonna see it, all the way to this top section. Now, the wood up here is solid and I don't really wanna force it. I'm gonna use my rotary tool from Proxon and cut a little notch just so I have a place for this little thin wire. But all these lights just get piled up at the top. Now I'm gonna adhere them down so I have really good coverage. This is gonna be covered in that little groove, but now you're seeing how this is starting to come together, right? Now we have another layer. This is just an eighth of an inch thick. You'll notice it still has the same openings, but now we introduce the frame up at the top, the support for our stained glass. That goes up top. For the stained glass, I used shrink film from Graphics. But the problem is when that shrinks, it's not quite an eighth of an inch thick. And so if I put that between wood where there's an eighth of an inch gap, it kind of shimmied a little bit. So I cut some felt just to give it a little, a little squish. Is squish a good technical term for this? And that'll get adhered right down here, right in place. I think you're getting the idea here, right? Again, don't worry about this pattern. You can download the PDF and cut it out with a craft knife or, hey, great use for that Brother electronic cutting machine, the scan and cut. And you'll even notice I didn't have enough felt to do it all in one color, but it doesn't matter, right? Nobody's gonna see this. This is just a little give underneath our stained glass. Now you come up with the stained glass pieces. This is shrink art film from Graphics. So it's a sheet that I can put through my inkjet printer. I printed the design, then I put it in the oven about 300 degrees, about three minutes. Of course, you cut it out when, before you shrink it. Otherwise, this is pretty solid, right? This is thick, it doesn't bend. The trick is getting the sizing right. Every shrink plastic is different. So what I did was take a shape, a bunch of lines, I knew the size, I shrunk it down, I looked at what I got as an end result, and then I did the math. So, you know, you never thought you'd use algebra. This was the time for that. Don't worry, on the pattern, I tell you exactly how big these should be. I let you download it, just send them to the printer. You can use my stained glass. So, print it, cut it out, shrink it, and now you're gonna lay that in place. So I won't lay them all in place here. And of course, you know, when we're doing a dry fit, we don't have to be exact. We're just trying to get the idea here, but you can see how they all sit on top of the felt. Remember that felt just gives us a little bit of squish so that when we put the next layer, it's nice and snug. And you're gonna adhere these probably with a dry adhesive. Again, score tape would be the best choice for that. And remember he broke the window. So I made some pieces that look like broken window, little shards, sharp pointy edges, and they fit right in these little nooks and crannies. So we're gonna lay the shards in there. It's up to you how much of the window's broken, how much of the window covers the dragon eye. Now we have another eighth inch layer. Notice there's no window cut out here. This is just the same thickness as the shrink plastic and it gives us that edge, that frame, that the shrink plastic just sets in. So the idea here is that the shrink plastic combined with the felt is an eighth of an inch. That's exactly how thick that wood is. Now we have another piece. And see, this is solid. Think about why, look what that does. It covers the battery pack down at the bottom and it holds all the shrink film in place. 
The last layer is really decorative and I did a quarter of an inch here. I cut this out because I thought, well, wow, that gives me a really cool recessed area. I could do a foil design down there. I could put a clock. Um, I'm really debating. I have some castings of some cherubs heads. I might put that in there, but that is done. That's how we assemble the dragon in the window. Now in terms of paint, this is one of my favorite techniques. I like to start out with black paint, do all of the exposed wood in black, and then sponge or brush on burnt umber. What you're going to end up with is like an old piece of wood. It's not quite brown. It's not really black. Um, it looks really incredible. If you want to make this look aged more, you know, bang it with a, with a hammer or throw some chain at it, make some dents and marks. Um, I decided I didn't want to do that. I thought about sanding the edge to make it rounded. I think I'm going to keep it just like this. And who knows what my next dragon in the window will be. Let's see, make sure our light mechanism is working. So I'm going to stick the little, little button out just so I can reach it. And let's see if we can turn it on, and at the same time, I can lift a little bit. Yep. And now we're going to get some lights around that edge, so it should really make it sparkle. Of course, you want to paint everything before you put in the dragon eye or the stained glass. Always try to do the painting stuff as best you can when things are apart or disassembled, because that way you don't have to worry about protecting things you don't want to get paint on. So that's really the next step, is for me to paint all this, then really glue it and assemble it, then do any little finishing touches. I have to figure out what I want to do on the bottom, but I wanted to make sure you could see how we have seven layers of wood, plus the diamond art, the felt spacer, and the shrink film for our stained glass. Don't forget, forget that piece of foil to give us a little reflectivity back in the back of that window. And when you're done, you'll have your own dragon in the window. I'm Joe. Check out my other videos. Subscribe to Create and Craft. Subscribe to our email newsletter. Get out there and start making.